Okay. All right. So, hello everyone. My name is Erica. I'm an English teacher. I'm also a language learner. And in this live stream, I'll be talking about Duolingo, which is the app that I like the most uh, to use as a language learner and as an English teacher. Uh, Duolingo was born, I think, in 2013, so it's been around six years, and I created my account around that time, and I used it kind of intermittently, uh, not consecutively, uh, doing different courses, right? So. The first course that I did here, that I finished, well, the, the first courses were always based on English. Uh, my native language is Portuguese, but I kind of avoided using Portuguese here. So I love to, to start learning new languages based on um, English. You can see here that all these courses, uh, French from English, Esperanto from English, Hungarian, but the, the basic Romance languages, Spanish, um, well, the Italian, and what else? And French, this one here. Um, so, the way I use Duolingo changed throughout the years. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I would work with a course, finish the course, and then have a hiatus, um, a break, take a break, sometimes a very long break. Uh, months and years between one course and the other. Last year, I was very, very inspired by someone I met and had the, the chance to talk with on uh, an Instagram live stream. Uh, Diego, he's here, I follow him. Uh, Diego Dutra, he is a, a great language learner too. And as I was talking with him, I got really, really inspired to use Duolingo on a daily basis. So as you can see here, this number shows <clears throat> the number of consecutive days I have been using Duolingo, so without a break, 641 days. As you can see also, it's uh, in the, it's, uh, there is just the, the shadow here of this number, which means I haven't used Duolingo today, okay? So, um, one of the things I started doing is using Duolingo every day. One of the problems I had in the past is, oh my God, there are some days uh, in which I have more time. I can definitely use Duolingo a lot, but there are other days in which I'm super busy, especially you know, in those months as an English teacher, there are some months in which I work more and it's hard to find time to study but I decided to make time to study. So how can I uh, use Duolingo on a daily basis? First of all, I felt that it was very, very important to me to do it, okay? To, to use uh, some kind of resource, material, whatever. If you don't like Duolingo, something else on a daily basis, okay? Because why? One of the reasons is that I feel learning in general and language learning specifically is like, not, but like a muscle that gets stronger, more robust with time, with daily practice. If I want that muscle to become stronger, I need to practice every day. Uh, this is something I was feeling very uncomfortable about. Uh, these languages that I had learned in the past, Italian, French, Spanish, uh, my knowledge was very weak and I, I didn't want to feel that way. I wanted to, to brush up on those languages and have a constant, um, uh, be constantly exposed to them. And being, using Duolingo every day would allow me to do that. And in fact, that's, wh that's uh, what happened. My strategy to use Duolingo every day, and you can apply this strategy uh, on any other kind of material that you have, is to um, do a very, very small task, okay? Something that will take you a few minutes, two minutes, even less sometimes. 
So today I'm going to show you here what I would do. So this is my French course. Why am I doing this course? Uh, I finished the course a few months ago <laughs> and then Duolingo added, they regularly do this, they added new information here, new exercises. So this, these uh, units in purple are new, okay? And uh, it, they added this in the middle of the course. So I want to update this course and work on this, these units. These units are far down the road. Look, this is the whole course and the units are here about three fourths of the road, which means this kind of language tends to be a little bit more complex. You know, uh, the grammar tends to be a bit more difficult. So which means it will take me more time. So what I do is I go back to the beginning, to the basics, first unit, and I do the practice here. And uh, here you have two options. You can either practice without a timer or with a timer. This is a timed practice. Uh, this is something that I learned with Diego. Diego always used, uh, uses the timed practice. Okay, so I started doing that and I have stopped in this past two years uh, using the practice without a timer. So you press here. Actually, you need to buy this at the store, okay? You buy the timed practice. I'm gonna show you now before I do the exercise. So if you don't have that, you click here at on shop and you have this thing here, timed practice, you can buy. You buy it only once, I think it's around 20 lingots. Lingots are these uh, red stones here. So I bought it, I don't know when, and uh, it's it lasts forever and uh, you can use it for any language, any course on Duolingo, okay? So it's, you just buy it once. So going back to the unit, now I have my timed practice here. I click on the green button and the chronometer is running here. So uh, which one of these is the man? L'homme. 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 A cat is eating a uh, croissant. Un chat mange un croissant. Uh, which one of these is the orange? L'orange. L'orange. A woman and a man. Une femme et un homme. Une femme et un homme. Une, Une femme, femme et, et un, homme. un homme. You are eating an orange. Uh, tu manges une orange. C'est une orange. C'est à poste. C'est une, une orange. orange. Un chat et un cheval. Un chat et un cheval. Um, a cat and a horse. Un chat et un homme. Un, un chat, chat et, et un, un homme. homme. Tu manges un croissant. Tu manges un croissant. You eat a croissant. Tu es Paul. Tu es Marc. Tu es Marc. Are you Marc? Tu manges une pizza. Uh, le cheval. Un chien et un cheval. Un chien et un cheval. Le croissant. Une femme. Une femme. Uh, le chien. Are you Mark? Tu es Mark? Uh, un chien. E a cheval and that's it uh, with time practice you get if you don't get if you don't make any mistake uh, you get 20 points so it's double the untimed practice if you make mistakes you get that amount of uh, points that you got right so you can get one point three points ten points up to 20 okay so you don't lose everything you don't have to repeat that you gain some points which is good. I'm. Uh, oh, this is one of my motivations. There are a lot of mod motivations, but I like points. I need points. They uh, work for me as some kind of reference to make me move, keep doing something using Duolingo somehow. So now I got my 642 days, consecutive days, and 
I'm ready to do uh, whatever whatever else I have to do um, on that day. It took me, what, less than a minute probably. Okay? So I'm done here. Now it's orange. I don't have to worry about this. And I feel good. I don't have any weight on my conscience because I studied a little bit. Did you see my practice? I reviewed the basics. It's always good to review the basics. If you do have time, you uh, you choose something else to do. Um, I, uh, I saw these new units here, French units, while I was doing another course, which is Scottish Gaelic. This one here. So, um, talking a little bit more about how I use Duolingo, I usually choose a course and I focus on that course until the end. I, I don't change. I don't usually change mid, uh, uh, midway, mid, mid course and start another course. I usually like to try and finish that course. So, but Scots Gaelic is a very, very hard language <laughs> because it is very um, atypical. The structures are not very familiar to me. When I talk about languages, I like to say that languages are not difficult per se. They are unfamiliar to us. The more difficult you think a language is, it means actually that there is there there is less familiarity with that language. What is the solution? Increase the familiarity. Increase the familiarity how? By exposing yourself to the language. How? By reading in that language, by listening in that language. When I talk about listening, I'm referring to songs, I'm referring to podcasts, to YouTube videos, to movies, to TV shows, etc. In the case of Scots Gaelic, Scottish or Scots Gaelic, it's a little bit harder to find material because very few people speak this language. This language, but there are still a lot of uh, there is a lot of material online. So I have found some songs and etc. etc. Uh, so you can read, you can listen, and you can, of course, write. If you meet someone online, if you meet someone from Scotland, you can exchange uh, messages with this person. Messages are excellent uh, because we tend to write short sentences, basic sentences, repeated sentences, and this is what we need to learn. Repetition, uh, start from you know, small pieces of information, um, chunks of information, short sentences, simple, basic sentences, and repeat them a lot. So me exchanging messages with a native speaker, for example, could be nice to help you uh, memorize certain chunks of language, and then you can start using them in these chunks in conversation, maybe with the same person you've been messaging, uh, exchanging messages with. Uh, you can start sending recording messages, again, with these short, simple um, phrases, okay? That's what I do. Uh, I'm not usually very interested in doing that, in practicing the, the speaking abilities, the writing abilities. I'm usually just interested in learning the grammar, the mechanisms of a language, um, the kind of vocabulary, how the words are formed, how the sentences are struct structured, and I like to compare them. That's why I have <laughs> finished so many, not finished, but done so many courses. I've finished some and started others. I like to compare uh, the languages. So this is a hard course. I can't go very fast. I'm going super slowly. And what I do is I read the grammar. So I click, this is a purple unit, which means I haven't started working with it yet. I click here on tips. I study this. I usually, in uh, the harder or the, the most, the more unfamiliar a language, the more notes I tend to write. So in the case of Scots Gaelic, I would do this. I don't know if you can see this. I think I will lose the focus. So I write the, I copy the explanation here in a way I can understand. I don't know if you saw that I write 
I use capital letters to write a language that I'm not very familiarized with. So this, when the spelling is very different and everything else is very different, I tend to capitalize to use capital letters with all the words because this is a way that helps me understand the sequence of letters, the common sequence of letters in that language, the patterns, you know, because there are patterns and you, it helps me learn faster. And under that, I write the translation in English because this is a Scots Gaelic from English course. Um, so I copy what I feel I need to learn. And after I study the, the grammar, I click here and do each lesson slowly. Ha dom an. Ha dom an. And I copy the sentences again on my notebook in Scots Gaelic in capital letters and underneath in English. Okay, the translation in English. Why? Because this is this is completely different uh, from Portuguese. Okay, so I need time and I need to pay very close attention to the spelling, etc. The pronunciation here is another story. It's completely different. It would take me many, many years to get a, more acquainted with the language. This is not my objective here. My objective, again, is to finish the course. It is a short course, kind of short, and, but I feel it would take me a long time. So after I saw that I have some extra units here in my French course, I decided to do something unusual to interrupt my Scots Gaelic course and work on these units here, French uh, from English. Uh, as an English teacher, why I, I like Duolingo also, of course. Let me just get the course English from Portuguese. English from, oops. English from Portuguese. I did this course. Okay, English from Portuguese. Uh, it is not an easy course. <laughs> mm, let me just wait. Yes. And it's very long. It's kind of complete. I recommend doing this course on Duolingo because it will take you to an intermediate level. And you won't be able to speak fluently after you finish this course. But if you do it correctly, paying a lot of attention and trying to retain as much information as you can, you will learn a lot in a very short time. It depends on how much time you have to study. So I did the whole course. So now I can tell my students to, to do the course too. And it's up to them to do the course or not. Um, but what I'm really focusing on is on this new uh, part here, which we already had for English and these stories are available now from Portuguese, English from Portuguese. So I tell my students, I already did all the stories too. <laughs> I like to do everything my students do because then I, I know what I'm talking about. So I did all the exercises. What I ask my students to do is, what are these stories, first of all? These are very simple and short and basic stories that involve a little Good bit morning. of practice. It's like an exercise. You listen to each phrase and sentence, and you, you can hear, you can look up the words. And Good morning, honey. And one thing, I, the, student, the student doesn't do this during the class, but between the classes. So what I, what I tell them to do is to repeat out loud. So right after the recording. So good morning, good morning, honey. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Lauren. O que honey significa que? Querido. Where is my Portuguese book? Where is my Portuguese book? Your book? Your book? I have an important Portuguese exam this morning. I have an important Portuguese exam this morning. I need my book. I need my book. Lauren, your book is here on the table. Lauren, your book is here on the table. Sorry, honey. I'm tired. I work a lot. Sorry, honey. I'm tired. I work a lot. Cansado. Tired. Do you want some coffee? Do you want some coffee? Yes. With milk, please. Yes. With milk, please. Okay. Here. Okay. Here. 
Lauren puts sugar in the coffee. Lauren puts sugar in the coffee. O que a Lauren está fazendo? Colocando açúcar no café dela. She drinks her coffee. She drinks her coffee. Yuck! Yuck! What? What? It's salt. It's salt. It's salt. É sal. Lauren, you are very tired. Lauren, you are very tired. Yes, I need a new cup of coffee with sugar, not salt. Yes, I need a new cup of coffee with sugar, not salt. Lauren estava tão cansada que ela colocou sal no café dela. Selecione os pares. Some, um pouco de. Yes, sim, not. Não, ok. What? Good morning, bom dia. That's it. Before I click here on continuar, I ask my students to select the whole thing with Ctrl press, Ctrl A on your keyboard. Copy that, ok? And paste it on our document. We have a Google Drive document, one for each student. So the students paste the text there because uh, this text will disappear once I click here on continuar, okay? So I'm not gonna do this now. And you get some points for that. They practice, okay, I'm gonna click here. This is another way, by the way, to get points very fast because I don't know, maybe I, I went slower because I was reading out loud and, but it should take you less than five minutes, definitely. Imagine, there are a lot of stories here Each series has 10 stories. There are 11 series, so uh, how many stories? 11 times 10, 110 stories. So if you do one story per day, you're safe for three months, around three months, uh, in terms of your streak here, okay? All right, this is what the student does between the classes. What does the student do In the class, the student tells me the story. Okay, so I tell, I ask the student, uh, which story did you work with this week? And they will tell me, Bom dia, good morning. And then I ask them, Oh, please tell me the story. And then they tell me. Okay, the idea uh, of speaking in my class is not is speaking perfectly. This is not the objective. This is not what I expect. I don't expect perfection because a student is always learning and a student is always making mistakes. So I expect, actually what I expect is mistakes, right? What I also expect is as time goes by and as the student studies regularly, these mistakes will become, will disappear, right? The student will correct the, these mistakes. So this is something I expect too. I expect mistakes, but I expect that the student with time, with practice, corrects uh, the mistakes, all right? So the student will tell me, oh, in this story, uh, there are two people, I think they're a couple, they're at home, and uh, I think it's morning, and uh, the woman, is going to take to have an exam, a Portuguese exam. She doesn't know where her book is. Her husband tells her, oh, the book is on the table. And uh, the woman says, oh, yes, I'm so tired. I didn't, I couldn't remember it was here. <clears throat> and the husband offers some coffee. She accepts. <clears throat> she puts sugar in her coffee. Then she drinks it and says, yuck. And the husband asks, What's wrong? And she says, oh, it's salt, it's not sugar. The husband says, you need another cup of coffee. And she says, yes, without salt, with sugar this time. So of course, the way I'm telling you the story is a bit more fluent than what a student will tell me because I'm a teacher, I know the language more, and I've re uh, done this exercise here, bon dia, this story repeatedly a thousand times, I'm not kidding. So I kind of memorized the story. The student will make a lot of mistakes, but the student will try to say something. This is the point. This is what I'm interested in. When the student tells me, okay, whatever is in their mind, 
whatever they remember. In order to remember, you have to practice a lot before the class. The more the student practices, the easier it is to tell me the story in class. The students can feel that and they do whatever they feel is necessary. If, if they can't practice, they know they, want, they will not be able to speak so well. But if they do practice a lot, they can expect a better performance in class. Okay? Uh, so it's one story per week. The students usually uh, have classes once per week. And the stories are, they, they are cumulative. So in the second week, for example, the student will work with the story a date, o encontro. And on the second class, I will tell the student to tell me a date, the new story, and good morning, the previous story. On the third class, the student will tell me a thing, uma coisa, and a date, o encontro, and uh, good morning, bom dia, and so on and so forth. So, at the end of the 10th uh, story, on the 10th class, the student will spend almost the whole class tell me the, telling me the stories. And um, an advantage of doing that is that the, the student, by telling some stories so many times, he will be able, that's repetition, that's the advantage of repetition, the student will remember more details, will be able to, uh, to better tell me the story, especially the first ones here, bom dia. The story will be told for the tenth time here and uh, in a better way, definitely. Okay? So telling stories uh, is a very good way to, for the student to know how well he's doing with his practice. Because speaking is a result of all the other things you have to pay attention to, you have uh, equally. Uh, Increasing your vocabulary, the amount of words that you know in English. Increasing your knowledge of grammar, how to form sentences and things like that. Increasing your knowledge of reading, right? Being able to read text and interpreting them. Uh, being able to understand spoken English. Your ability to write well, because the better you write, the better you can speak. So. The more you improve these skills, the better your speaking will probably be because speaking is based on all these other aspects of the language. There are many other aspects, pronunciation and so on and so forth, but it's important for the student to be able to cover all of the, of the basis uh, of the, what I call the pyramid because the speaking would be on top. And it's a direct reflection of how much practice, how many hours of practice, okay, um, the student has invested their time. Okay, so it's a matter of investing time on something. So this is uh, uh, my tip for today. Okay, two tips, right? So the first tip is if you don't want to lose your, uh, your streak, work with the first unit do a review or one if you haven't uh, reached because i have finished here the i have covered the five levels of uh, unit one introduction but you can do one lesson one lesson is also of the introduction right always go back to the introduction because it will be very easy it is important to review and you get your streak here if you have more time, you keep studying whatever you feel like. This is tip number one. Tip number two, work with stories, stories if you are learning English from Portuguese. Because these stories, uh, these stories are not available for just any language on Duolingo. It's just English from Portuguese and some languages from English. German, French, and Spanish from English. And I think there is Chinese too, but I, I don't know Chinese, so I don't even, um, I, I don't know anything about that, okay? All right, so I guess that's it for today. That's what I, I don't want to, to talk more about it. <laughs> I think I, I've told you how I use a notebook in combination with Duolingo. I will tell you to finish the course, okay? Try to always finish whatever it is that you started, if you feel it's going to, it, it, because it has a path and you don't have to waste energy and time 
uh, deciding every day what you're going to do. This is why I like Duolingo, because there are a lot of courses with a beginning and an end and uh, all the steps that you need to know the basics of a language. That's what Duolingo is for, to cover the basics, okay? Thank you so much. Let me see if there are comments. Merovingian. Hello, Merovingian. So, uh, estou na metade e aprendi muitas regras gramaticais de inglês. Yes. A crítica que tenho é esse método de completar sentenças em inglês, clicando nas palavras. É bastante chato. Desculpe falar em português. Não tem problema falar em português. É, essa é a reclamação número um das pessoas, né? Que o Duolingo é chato. <risos> e, no meu caso... É, eu como é que eu vou explicar isso eu eu não acho chato eu acho necessário a minha é, a minha visão é o seguinte é um chato que é necessário entendeu então assim se tem uma coisa que é chata e que eu vejo assim olha isso aqui não tem futuro para mim porque eu não vou aprender nada com essa coisa chata eu paro mas se eu vejo assim, não, isso aqui tem um potencial para eu aprender. É chato, mas tem um potencial, porque coisas que eu é, vejo, né, que podem me ajudar em termos de material, de recursos, é o seguinte. O material, ele tem uma estrutura, ele é bem estruturado, ele tem um começo e um fim. Por isso eu gosto de livros, né, eu uso muito livro. É, tem um começo, tem um fim, tem uma explicação passo a passo cobre os pontos principais de gramática, cobre o vocabulário básico, isso aqui pode ser um ponto de partida para um outro material no futuro? Pode, então eu vou encarar essa chatice aqui, tá? E o que acontece, olha, com 642 dias de uso do língua, né, é, sem, sem interrupções, o que eu senti é que no começo era chato, mas agora já ficou, ficou uma coisa que eu não sinto, porque é como escovar dente, né, é, escovar dente, por exemplo, escovar dente é uma coisa chata, ai, tem que parar, tem que escovar dente, mas eu sei que é uma coisa necessária, eu sei que é uma coisa importante e eu vou continuar fazendo, mesmo sendo chato, né, arrumar a cama, arrumar a cama é uma coisa que eu, eu me sinto melhor quando a cama do meu quarto tá arrumada, é uma coisa chata de fazer, mas eu faço, porque eu vou me sentir melhor psicologicamente, né? Menos depressiva. Eu, pra mim, eu fico deprimida quando eu vejo uma cama desarrumada. Varrer o chão. Varrer o chão, fazer faxina na casa. É chato. Mas eu faço porque, de novo, é saudável, né? Viver num ambiente limpo. E psicologicamente também é, me deixa mais é, focada e tal. Me sinto melhor. Então, tem várias coisas chatas na vida, mas que eu sinto que é, são necessárias porque elas são positivas, elas têm um impacto positivo na minha vida, né? Uma outra coisa... Agora, tem várias maneiras de lidar com essa chatice. No caso do banheiro, por exemplo, quando eu vou fazer faxina no banheiro, é uma coisa chata, mas é uma coisa necessária. Então, uma, um dos truques né, que, eu, que eu uso... Que eu, eu ouvi algumas pessoas fazendo e eu sempre faço. Eu escuto o áudio enquanto eu estou fazendo faxina no banheiro. Então, é, normalmente eu escuto audiolivros, audiobooks, ou então é, podcasts, né? Ou um ou outro. Tá? Às vezes eu estou cansada de livro, eu escuto podcast. Às vezes eu estou cansada de podcast, eu escuto os livros. Hoje, é, nesse momento, eu estou lendo, estou audiolendo um, um livro em inglês. Um livro em inglês, né? Então, é na língua que vocês estão estudando. Então, essa coisa de ser chato, que assim, 99% dos, dos meus alunos e das pessoas em geral falam que o Duolingo é chato. É, é chato, mas tem muita coisa chata na vida. Mas ser chato por si só é, não é suficiente para mim. Tem muita coisa chata que eu sinto que tem, que vão dar resultados muito positivos para mim no futuro. Então, eu encaro a chatice e tento lidar com ela, achar estratégias para lidar com essa chatice. No caso do Duolingo, uma coisa que me ajuda a lidar com a chatice é a pontuação. Eu gosto muito da pontuação. Eu sigo pessoas que, que também gostam de pontuação. Sigo cinco pessoas que têm mais pontos do que eu no Duolingo. O Diego tem um monte, né? O Diego é um que 
transformou o Duolingo numa prática diária. E essas pessoas usam todo dia. Ah, ok. I'm sorry. So, so back to English. Uh, so, uh, trying to change that boring, annoying aspect of Duolingo into something fun. For me, what works is points, uh, keeping track of points. So um, here, you know, I, I'm, I don't li actually compete with these people, but I like to see that they are working with me daily, on a daily basis. So this is another tip, being part of a community. This is something that I learned uh, using Instagram to practice languages in 2018. I spent the whole year experimenting with Instagram. I created a separate uh, account there uh, and I chose one language to focus on, which was Polish. I don't know if you guys know. And uh, what I did is I recorded videos on a daily basis in Polish from zero knowledge to some knowledge at the end of, actually at, uh, at the beginning of 2019, because it was 12 months exactly and I started in March of 2018 and recording videos is something annoying is something boring is something that I don't love okay but I that was my challenge to record every day because I knew it would help me I would um, <coughs> get a lot of benefits from it and indeed I got a lot of benefits So it was very annoying. My husband knows, Newton knows how I, <laughs> that it was hard some days, you know, to stop everything and record the videos. And it can be a little stressful to upload the video and then the connection is not good and then you have to wait. And I, that's the part that I don't, don't like. And you have to, to wait and then <clears throat> it doesn't work. It doesn't, the, up, the, the upload doesn't work and you have to try again. I feel that I'm wasting a lot of time, but it's not. If you go there, if I go back to my Instagram account, uh, I can watch all my videos. I'm very, very happy that I did that. And my account there is public. So a lot of people commented on my pronunciation, on the way I was speaking Polish, you know. So it's something annoying that I transformed into something that could bring me a lot of benefits. This is what I have to say about anything, not just Duolingo being annoying, okay? Will it bring you benefits? Um, you know, in, in what proportion? Just a little bit or a lot? If you see potential in the material, try to find a way to overcome that annoyance with the material, okay? Because what I see, the most common thing is people give up very easily because of that. Oh, it's very boring. I'm not going to use it. And then they, they keep themselves from learning something because of that. Uh, so I encourage people to become stronger, have, uh, to have a sturdier frame of mind. Okay, more stoicism. Uh, finish whatever you begin. Uh, and you will have, you will feel very, very good at the end of that process. I guarantee you, <laughs> if you're really, if that is your goal, you will feel good. Uh, okay, any other comments? Um, yes, the grammar, you're talking about the tips, right? Hello, Amanda. How do I... Um... What is the site of the stories that you talked about? That's Duolingo, Duolingo here. This is the course. This is the English from Portuguese course. And here you have Historias, okay? So you just click here and uh, there will be up to now because Duolingo is always adding new stories, always. Uh, so up to now there are 110 available stories here. And you click, it's, uh, all of them are golden because I did all of them, <laughs> all of them. I really love this. Uh, so it's good a, morning. let me open a new one. So that's good morning. This is a date. A date. 
and I think it's super cool. Okay, something that I did for uh, German, Spanish, and French is I did the stories, all of them. So let me get here French from English. French from English. Uh, so there are stories for French from English here. And look at what I did. <laughs> it was crazy. I did. Bonjour. Did, bonjour. I did all the exercises. And then, like I showed you, I copied the text. I practiced the text because it's short, right? I memorized the whole story. And then I recorded myself telling the story, uh, the same story. Uh, the last familiarization I had, familiarity, the less familiarity I had with the language, the more I would memorize the sentences. And this is another thing that people don't like, right? They say, oh, I don't like memorizing things. I don't like memorizing stuff. I feel it helps me learn, okay? Things that people don't like, repetition, memorization, what else? I think these are the two things that students hate the most, repetition, memorization. Let me tell you something, repetition and memorization are the two things that help me learn a language. <laughs> okay, so telling from experience. I have a YouTube, this is Menor Sem Inglês. But I have another YouTube account, Polyglot Erica. Follow me there. And by the way, click hit that like button, please. It helps our channel grow. Follow us. And on my other account, Polyglot Erica, you will find me telling you all these stories in French, Spanish, and German. <laughs> so it was really good. And some of these videos were upload uploaded to my Instagram account, Polyglot Erica, too. So I feel that repetition and memorization, I don't just feel, I know, I remember things because of that, because of contact with the language, constant contact with the language. In another uh, live stream, I will show you how I have been using Twitter nowadays to, to practice languages too, okay? Um, Yes, discipline. Discipline is key. You know, you, you have to be able to control yourself. If you control yourself, you can do whatever you want to do. So, um, what do I mean by controlling yourself? Controlling this feeling that, oh, I want to stop. You know, I, I want to stop. I want to give up. If you're able to control that, you will finish anything. You know, if you, if you have a plan, if you have a goal and you know the steps to reach that goal, and if you can keep yourself from giving up because this is the problem, you, you can do, you know, anything that you set your heart to. Yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> English now. My name on Instagram, polyglot Erica. Polyglot under how do you call that under strike or something erica with a k okay so i think that's it for today thank you so much for joining us i really like when you participate ask questions comment tell me about your experience this is something i'm always interested in uh, getting to know how you study what resources you study how you use these resources how often uh, you use them you know, what uh, helps you learn in a more efficient way? I like uh, when you share that kind of information too. So uh, I will stop here. I wish you uh, a great 2020. Learn a lot. I hope you reach all your goals, objectives, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.